In the previous demo, you saw how to bring masks from Photoshop into NIC 8. Now you'll see how masks are additionally shared between plugins and how masks created in the NIC collection can be shared back to Photoshop. Let's start in Silver Effects. For this photo, I'm not going to do any masking in Photoshop, but instead go straight into Silver Effects. Right away, you'll notice a big difference in Silver Effects, and that is that all the filters are no longer on the right. Now Silver Effects works more like Color Effects, where none of the filters are added until you need them. I can either add them manually, or by choosing one of the presets here, the filters that are needed for that preset will be added on the right. If I revert the image back to its neutral state, then all those filters go away. There is one thing that's still here though, and that is the film types. You can think of film types like your original black and white processing, how the image is converted from color to black and white. What is the basic film stock, the grain pattern, the color sensitivity, and so on. It's actually important that you start with this before adding other filters, because if you add a filter first and then go back and change the basic processing, the entire look of the image can change. So you really do want to start with the film types. You have a bunch of different film types that you can start with, and of course each one of these provides a unique base look for your image. I'll choose this one to start with. One of the most important parts of a film's look is its color sensitivity. How sensitive was the film to red colors, to yellow colors, blue, and so on? And by adjusting these, you can dramatically change the overall look of your image. The problem is that you don't necessarily know what part of the image you're changing other than just dragging the sliders around and seeing what happens. And the reason for that is you can't see the original color image. Well, you used to not be able to, but now with NIC 8, you can. If I go down here to the bottom left corner, you'll see there's a new original image tab. That shows me the original color image, so now I know exactly what parts of the image I'll be affecting with each one of these sliders. For example, here we see a lot of blue and purple in this part of the photo. If I go over here to my blue sliders and change that, you'll see that that's affecting that part of the image. So now we just have a lot more control and knowledge over what we're doing. So let's start affecting this photo. It's a photo of a wine cellar, and the wine bottles over here on the edges are getting a bit lost. It's just a little bit too crunchy. We can see that my black levels have been dropped quite a bit, so I'm going to recover that, maybe even raise it up a little bit, about like so. Now the bottles look better, but the wine racks themselves are way too bright. What color are the wine racks? Well, if I look at my color image, I can see that they're largely yellow and red. So if I go to my film sensitivity and take the yellows and the reds down a bit, I should be able to darken all of those colors in the image. Now that I've done my basic black and white conversion, I can add other filters to this knowing that my underlying layer is not going to change dramatically. I'll go ahead and add a bit of a sepia tone like this to the image. Now let's continue to refine the image. I'm going to add a basic adjustment, and I want to darken the floor. So to do that, I'm going to use a control polygon, which was added in the previous version of Nick Collection, and draw a polygon over the floor area, very quickly outlining this shape like so. To preview the mask that I've just drawn, I can click on this icon here, and we'll see the mask that I've just created. Now to darken that floor, I'll just go to the brightness slider and pull that down a bit. Next, this bright spot on the back wall has lost some of its texture and structure, so let's fix that. To do that, I'm going to use a new local adjustment, the new color mask. This will allow me to create a mask based off of the color of the original image. So here I've just clicked where the image is predominantly blue, and if we take a look at the mask that I've just created, we can see that it is affecting the blue areas. If I grab that color mask point and drag it around the image, you can see how it's masking specific colors depending on where I position it. But I'll go ahead and put it back here towards blue, and then let's refine that. Under the mask options, you can see exactly the color range that's been selected. And you can see on this hue band that it's selected largely blue. If I want to expand or contract that, I can start by feathering that in and out, or expanding the entire selected range. You'll notice that these are linked together right now. If I click this little chain icon, it is going to unlink those ranges, so now I can adjust them independently. I really want to narrow this down, so let's contract that to right about there. Now I'll hide the mask, and let's take the structure of that part of the image and crank it way up. Excellent. Earlier I showed you how if you want to save the current state of an image, you can export a JPEG or a TIFF file of the image as it currently is. But there's another way to do that. Instead of saving it out as a separate file, you can save it as a hidden layer inside of Photoshop. To do that, simply click on Send as Layer. Now this version, as we see it currently, will be in Photoshop, rendered out as a hidden layer, so that when we go back to Photoshop, it's there waiting for us.
I'm not quite done with this image, but I am done with it in SilverFX. Now I could simply apply this and then reopen it in another plugin, or I could send it directly to the plugin from here within SilverFX. Watch this. Up in the top right, I can choose to send this image and its masks to any of the other plugins. This allows me to keep all the masking work I've done in this plugin, including generated and imported masks, and carry them over to another. Now that I'm in analog effects, let's add a little bit of a light leak. Click on the plus here. I'm gonna choose from my crisp collection, and I'll grab this one here that I like. Let's position that kind of right in the center. Maybe even bring up the intensity a little bit. Looking pretty good, however, it's a bit too strong on the floor here. Well, remember, I already created a mask for the floor over in Silver Effects, and that mask is available for me here in Analog Effects. Just like I'd import a Photoshop mask, I'll click on the Import button, and there we can see the masks that I created in Silver Effects, my Control Polygon and the Color Mask. The Polygon for the floor is the one that I want, so I'll add that in. And it is the entire Polygon, so I could even adjust this if I wanted to. But in my case, all I'm going to do is take the strength of that texture down a bit. That's better. Now let's save this as another layer in Photoshop because I want to keep on playing. So I'll send that out as a new layer and then add something else. How about I add a quick picture frame to this? We'll choose something really dramatic and call it a day. Now I'm ready to apply this, but there is one more option in here that I want to show you. I can now choose to include the plugin masks back in Photoshop. The one that I want is that control polygon for the floor. So I'll go ahead and save that and now click apply. Now we see a couple of things happening here in Photoshop. First of all, there's the final image that I just created, but here's the hidden layers of the two other versions as I was playing with it. So there's the one from Silver Effects, the original from Analog Effects, and the final version. Where's that mask that I saved though? Well, there it is under Channels. There is the Control Polygon mask that I created in Silver Effects. So now you can see that the masks created in Photoshop can be brought into the Nick Collection, and the masks created in the Nick Collection can be brought back to Photoshop. It gives you the ultimate flexibility in working with masks.